Hi, this is Michael Taylor, host of Theater Corner, and we're in Los Angeles, California at the Geffen Playhouse. We're here with our, our guest, D.B. Woodside. Welcome to Theater Corner, brother. Hi, thank you very much, man. Thank so you very much. So very good to have you here. It's great to be here. And you're here at the Geffen performing in Dominique Morisot's The Skeleton Crew. Yes. And you're here playing the character of Reggie. Could you, could you tell me a little bit about uh, your character? Um, he's a very, uh, what I would call a conflicted brother, you know. Um, <laughs> when we first see him, I think there's a, a lot of stuff going on with him and we don't, we don't really know why and, you know, we, we slowly start to find out as the play un, unravels. Mm. But he's in a position, a, a supervisor position and, and I would probably say he's probably not built uh, <laughs> for that kind of position, <laughs> right. um, but he's doing the best that he can. Okay. Uh, he's trying to manage a lot that's going on right now in the world of this play. Mm -hmm. This is your first Dominique Morisot piece to perform? Very, very first one. Um, uh, it's a brilliant playwright. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I've been doing films and TV now for like the last uh, 10, 15 years, and so I haven't done a play in a while, but um, some people sent me this play. They, they, they told me uh, where it was being done, and. Um, I, I got a phone call from them asking if I was interested in it, and I read this play, and I mean, I'm, it, the play is amazing. Her words are amazing. Um, there's something about her words where it, it, it almost comes across as poetry, uh -huh. um, as, as arias, you know? Right, it's right. Uh, almost Shakespearean, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful words, beautiful story. It's kind of a, a musicality to it, uh, kind of like the August Wilson piece, I yes. would say. Yes, yes. And the fact that it does focus on just everyday people. Yes, uh, everyday blue-collar people, right. you know. <laughs> right. um, and there's also just something really interesting to, to see, you know, these blue-collar black folks in Detroit trying to navigate the world as it is right now. And there's something about, even though the play takes place in 2008, with everything that's going on in our country right now, mm. um, uh, 2018 seems a lot like 2008. <laughs> uh, so the play speaks to a lot of what's going on right now in our country. So you yourself, DB, uh, I, I understand uh, if you could talk a little bit about that, how you just accidentally became an actor. Oh, <laughs> um, well, I was, uh, I'm, I was a football player. You know, I was uh, one of those. and. Okay. Um, Football was what I wanted to do with my life. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to go to the pros. I, I, um, it's something that I'd been doing since I was six years old. Um, when I got to college, um, I got hurt. Mm -hmm. And I had a really bad back injury. Uh. And I was un unable to play. And so I was kind of lost for a while, to be honest. And um, I was hanging outside of the theater building with a really good friend of mine, another football player who had also been hurt. Mm. And... <laughs> he noticed that the most beautiful women on campus, a uh, true story, were going into the theater building. Oh my. And so we decided to uh, see what this building was about. <laughs> and, um, and as a result, we started to get into you know, acting classes. Um, he quit rather quickly, uh, <laughs> but, it, but it stayed with me. Okay. And, um, and I felt like when I walked into that world that I had found my people, as it mm. were. Um, and there was something about it, uh, something about being able to get on stage and disappear into the words of a fantastic writer and live that life and hopefully, hopefully um, uplift an audience or, or show them a, a point of view mm. that, that they've never seen or, or, or they've, they've never experienced. Uh, there was something about that world that I just fell in love with, and I continue to love to this day. Is it is the slipping into someone else's skin? Yes, part of the experience. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You know, because um, you know, one of those things is uh, you know, as an actor, also is you get a chance to maybe display certain emotions that you can't in uh, real life. Right, you know, because right. you would be arrested or <laughs> you know uh, something like that, right? right. Um, but you but you have an opportunity to to kind of 
slip into the skin of, of some of these characters um, and maybe understand from their point of view things that you were never really able to understand as, as DB. Interesting. Um, um, and it's, a, it's just something that's always been fascinating to me. And I feel like with every role that I do, I learn something else about myself, about how I may respond to things out there in the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's always a, a, a teachable moment you know, with, with every role that, that I'm uh, lucky enough to, to get. And so this play is being directed by uh, Patricia McGregor, yes. who's, a, who's a graduate of Yale School of Drama, but yeah. you yourself yes. uh, attended and graduated from uh, Yale School of Drama. And I, was, I was wondering, uh, what was that experience like uh, as, as a black man? It was very intense. Mm. Um, and, and, and you know, I, and I want to be clear to say that I really enjoyed my time at Yale. I mean, um, it, it was it was incredible, and uh, it, it it changed my life and and taught me so much. Um, I will say, at the time that I went, um, uh, I had a few run-ins with mm. with some of the higher ups. Uh, mm. And I'd like to believe it, it wasn't necessarily because I was a black man. Uh. It was that I was a specific type of <laughs> black man. And so there are certain things that I just didn't feel comfortable doing. Um, and I wasn't going to be uh, convinced uh, uh, that I should be comfortable doing something that I was bothered by mm. uh, morally. So I think that maybe caused a few situations mm. uh, that, that, that had to be resolved. Okay. Um, but I still say to this day, that place taught me more than any other job I've had outside of Yale. I mean, you spend three years cocooned with, with your class. And it's amazing, because I think most Yaleys would say, as great as the teachers are, as great as the university is, mm. that you actually learn the most from your peers. Uh. And, and it's the people that you're in class with. It's, it's, it's your other peers that are the directors and playwrights mm. and stage managers and production managers, all of us going through this intense program at the same time for three years. You spend so much time with these people that they become your family mm. and they know you better uh, at times than maybe boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, because you're, you're spending so much time with these people mm. and the time is so concentrated, so intense, so heavy. Um, and that's where you learn the most from your own classmates. You've got countless film, television, specifically Buffy, Vampire Slayer. Yeah. I mean, you did seven years on that, on that piece alone. And then there's 24 from Fox Network and, and The Temptations. You know, uh, which you, you, you played the brother with the deep voice. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Melvin Franklin. But uh, what, what would you say there is about, about theater, about, about standing on that stage? What, what brings you back to theater? Well, there's just something magical about theater. And as an actor, I mean, I, and I think you'll hear most actors say this, you know, film and TV is great, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I love uh, television programs. I love going to see a fantastical movie. Mm. Doing a play, there is just, there's no barrier. There's no editor, there's no cut, uh -huh. there's no do-over, right? Right, right? As an actor, you are on that stage with other actors, and when it's lights up, mm -hmm. that's it. Uh -huh. And you're walking that tightrope with your brothers and sisters, and that's all you have. And, and there is something terrifying about that, <laughs> which, is, which is, I think, why we, why we love it. Because if you're, if you're lucky enough to do it well, if you're successful, that adrenaline rush, oh, that, yeah. that high, is unbelievable. And there is a dynamic um, that is set up between actor and audience um, when, you're, when you're on the stage that cannot be duplicated in film and TV. It's, it's live, it's, it's moment to moment. You are having an experience with these other people at the same time. And that moment can't be duplicated. Every right. single night, you, you have a different Cer audience. Certainly. And so every single night, you are receiving a different type of energy, which is going to inform you and mm. in what you're doing on stage at that particular moment. And it's, 
just incredible. It's mm. incredible. You, you think your experience on TV and film as, as an actor perhaps would have been different if, if your foundation was not theater? You know, I have some friends who've, who've never done a play, right. you know? And, and they talk about it, and it, it, there's something about it where, you know, I, I mean, it, that's, it, it's, it's their choice. Um, but I always try to convince my friends who've never done a play before mm -hmm. that they have to do it just for the experience because they have to know what that's like. Mm. I think most of the time, if you're an actor that's, that's only doing film and, and TV, you're, you're missing out on something. And there's a certain kind of, um, when you start doing a lot of film and TV, there's a certain kind of uh, laziness mm. that can fall on actors. And when you come back to the stage, it's really dusting off um, all of that dust. It's, right, it's clearing the cobwebs away um, and kind of getting back in touch with why you do what you do. Right. You know? Like I said, film and TV is fantastic. Right. Um, but there just is nothing like the mysticism <laughs> of being on stage with an audience. We have a lot of up and coming actors that, that watch Theater Corner. Uh, what, what, what kind of advice would you have for, for an up and coming actor? You know, what I see nowadays, um, and it's unfortunate, and I don't think it's a, the, the fault of young actors, mm. I, I, I kind of fault our, our teaching now. Mm. Um, I think a lot of young actors are, are, are always taught to just be themselves. And I, I think that's great, but you, but you have to understand that, uh, you know, people aren't necessarily paying money to just come see you be you, <laughs> you know? Um, they also want to see you create a character. Now, that character should be based off a part of you, mm. you know, so, so that's your way into that character. But then I think once you've opened that door, you have to understand the circumstances of that character, right, of, right. of the world that they're in. So what I would say to young actors is, you know, make sure that you get that extra bit of training. Mm. You know, you're now competing with actors that are coming from Britain, uh, actors that are coming from China, mm. uh, actors that are coming from Australia, great actors, great actors coming here. You have to up your game. Mm. These are powerful actors, actors that we should be embracing and, and welcoming because what they do when they come over is they challenge us. Right, right, and, right. and the more that we are challenged and the more that we challenge ourselves, the better we can become. And so I would just say to all young actors, um, stay, stay in school, like stay in class. Even if you're doing plays, even if you're, you're starting to do some, some, some television work, some, some films, always find the time to go back to class uh -huh. because you're gonna surprise yourself. Um, and that would be my advice to them. You know, just, mm. just really always keep digging deeper. Mm. Um, there's ne there should never be a moment when you feel like I've arrived. No, you haven't. <laughs> Keep at the work. Keep working. Getting a great job does not mean you've arrived. It means you've gotten a great job. I hear you. That job will end. <laughs> and you need to keep going, okay. you know? So, so there, is no, there is no end point. You know, this is a process. No matter what you've done, no matter how successful you feel like you've been, mm -hmm. it never stops. It's a process. Keep working. Keep deepening. You can always be better. Wow. Well said, brother. Maybe I should be taking some of that advice myself. <laughs> I'm going to make some notes. <laughs> I appreciate that. And so we're back to Skeleton Crew. Any, any parting words about Skeleton Crew? I think Skeleton Crew is a play for the times that we're in right now. Uh, I think there's something so powerful about the words. Uh, Dominique is a force to be reckoned mm. with as a playwright. Patricia is a force to be reckoned with as a director. And this cast is unbelievable. So I would just highly recommend that people turn the TV off, um, pass over that film, mm. and come see this play. Sit down for two hours and let us hopefully show you a world that maybe you're not too familiar with but that you should be. 
E.B. Woodside, I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you very much. Chad with me at the Theater Corner. Thank you, viewers, for tuning into another episode of Theater Corner, and we'll see you next time.